Hello, I'm Rick from Vixen, and I want to first thank you for your purchase of the Vixen machine. I trust that you had a good experience with sales. Our sales staff is very knowledgeable and helpful. We want to continue that good experience by making sure that you set the machine up properly. So we're going to shoot a series of videos that are going to be very helpful for you. We're going to go through some of the basics. We're going to go through some of the utilities and connections. Uh, we'll know, you'll know some of the requirements and the operation of the machine. It's going to be very helpful. We'll shoot these in very short uh, videos so that you can come back and uh, check them out or advance wherever you're at in your setup and operation. And uh, let's get started. Now we're going to go to the uh, initial setup of the components that come with the machine. This is a closed loop rinse system. I'll explain that later. You want to make sure that you leave plenty of room behind the machine because this is a service area. You're going to have to service this for cleaning out the tank and you'll, you'll end up at some point working in the back of the machine for service as well. Once you have the settling tank in place underneath the pinch valve, you can put the removable tray on this end of the settling tank and the roll of filter paper. And that's fed underneath a rod here, which will advance across here. But you want to be sure that when you put this tray onto the settling tank, look for the Vixen logo here and the perforations that are underneath the pinch valve. That's a proper placement of this. Now that we have the settling tank in place, we can begin to connect the utilities. And it's really straightforward. I'm at the right leg if you were at the front of the machine, and you'll see the pressure regulator and the gauge there. So you simply connect your air, your compressed air right here. You want to make sure that you're able to supply at least 20 CFM at 90 PSI, and better is 30 CFM at 90 PSI. So if you're running a new compressed air line, make sure that it's large enough for the long run that you make from your compressor. We don't want to lose uh, air in restrictions here before we feed to the gun. As you can see, we've positioned our settling tank underneath the hopper drain. And you want to make sure that you have the Vixen side with the perforation directly underneath the hopper drain. So the water that you use for rinsing inside and the window wash water is going to come out of here and it's going to go into the settling tank. And the purpose of the settling tank is to settle out the media prior to going to drain so that you don't plug your drains up. You can also add filter paper to this to aid in initial filtering prior to going to drain. Our next video will show the electrical connection to the Vixen. First of all, we supply all different voltages. So any single phase or three phase voltage your machine will be for your specific area. And we highly recommend that you use your electrician and follow your codes in your building as well as your local codes. See, we brought our power in the upper right hand corner of the control panel and that's the most convenient because you have your on off switch here and you can see the three phases of the three phase power connected right here and we bring our ground connection over and ground that as well. It's very important that the machine be phased properly and uh, that's crucial for the pump rotation. We don't want to spin it backwards and unscrew the impeller and I'll explain that in a bit. We turn the main power on at the back of the machine. Now we'll power the machine up. So it has been shut off before, so you just simply turn this, you'll feel that pop out, and then you press the reset and turn the light on. And when the light comes on here, you know that you're good to go. So what we're gonna do now that we've connected the power, we know we're powered up, but we haven't phased the machine yet. And keep in mind, it's so important to not run that pump impeller backwards. So we're gonna take a look at that now, and we'll show you how to do that. One of the things you'll note when you unpack the machine is this cautionary notice. I can't stress this enough. When you phase the machine in, you do not want to test to see if you got the proper direction on the motor and the pump with water in the, in the hopper. You can unscrew the hopper and damage the pump. So make sure that you do this without any water in the hopper. You'll see that we have a decal on the side of the electrical panel giving you that caution as well. But just note that. Now that we're powered up, we'll actually check the rotation and make sure that the machine is properly phased. As you can see, Andy is ready to just hit that foot switch momentarily, turn that pump, because if it's not turning in the proper direction, we gotta go back into the electrical panel and swap any two of the three phase leads, and then it should rotate in the proper direction. So we're gonna give that a try right now. Andy, go ahead and just tap that. As you can see, it looked like it turned 
in the proper direction so it is turning clockwise we're po properly phased and again if it's not you just switch two of the three phase wires but certainly make sure your electrician is here when you do that now that we're confident that we have the proper rotation with the motor and the pump we can uh, fill it with water i like to lift the grate up so you can see well into the hopper and as you can see it uh, gives you a good view of all the components um, I'll explain the pump. You can see it's, it's a submerged pump and uh, there's no packings and it's what I call a true slurry pump and uh, that kind of sets Vixen aside from other manufacturers because it's urethane and it's tough and it's sealless. So we come out of the pump and you can see we branch into two flows. One of the flows, the direct flow, goes up to the blast gun and the other is agitation. So the one is stirring up and giving a nice blend of the media in the hopper and the other is feeding the blast gun and uh, the hopper looks very clean and you can see we brought the water level up to about a half inch uh, below the pinch valve and that's uh, when we add the media that's going to bring that level up and uh, this level is very easily maintained in a closed loop system and I'll describe that when we get to that. So we've phased the machine, we've uh, set everything up, we've got the abrasive in, we got the water in, we're ready for basic operation. It's really quite simple. You go back through the start up here and just turn the machine on, which when you look up, you'll see the lights on so you know you're ready to go. Your air pressure regulator is over to the right hand side. You normally blast between 60 and 80 PSI. That's gonna depend on what you've done in trial processing or the learning curve starts where you use different abrasives and you figure out all the great things that you can do with the machine. So we are all set to go. Uh, one of the things that you're gonna do is just put your arms in and step on the pedal. So before you go to the actual blasting portion to see what you're doing work-wise, just make sure that you take a look at the adjustment here. And that's for water fed to the window wiper. You just want a slow, steady stream that doesn't take a lot of water, and you'll notice that as you're blasting. You're going to get some splashback that's going to happen from your parts, and it's going to be on the window, and the wiper's a great feature, but it needs a little bit of water at times, so I'm going to make an adjustment there. Let's just go ahead and do that. Just a slow, steady stream, and that's gonna use uh, probably about a pint a minute, that's all. It doesn't take very much water to rinse the window. And when you're blasting parts, you wanna make sure that you're not letting the water come out, in, out of a cavity and back on the window. So that's really an operator technique. So you wanna blast away. You're gonna have the, you're gonna be blasting at a part, make sure that everything's deflecting and washing away. And that's just gonna keep your window cleaner and just make it nicer for you when you're blasting. So in order to drain the machine, there are several options that you have. Uh, either one, you're going to want to wash the cabinet down first and do a very thorough job of uh, rinsing uh, the ceiling and by the window. You want to get the door real well, the back wall, the side wall, and you even want to rinse forward and clean the cabinet up. This is particularly uh, important if you're changing abrasives because you want to get all of that media that you just used out when you switch to another media. We're gonna come over to the left side of the machine and you'll see a valve. That's an air valve, that's compressed air. So we're gonna open that valve up and that's gonna help us uh, agitate at the bottom of the hopper so that when we open up the main drain valve, that plugged media that's sitting there is gonna get in a suspension and it'll be a thick slurry, but it'll still drain out. As you can see, this is the main drain. It's all the way at the bottom of the hopper. So when you're gonna completely drain the slurry out of the hopper, this is the drain you're gonna use. This other drain that's a little bit smaller, you can see it's up a little ways. That's actually, below this point is the settling point of the media, whether you're using glass bead or aluminum oxide. If you allow five or 10 minutes, all of that media is gonna settle down here and you're just gonna have water above here. So this is very helpful when your water has gotten dirty or greasy or stagnant, but yet you're abrasive and your media is still good. So you're blasting at a good pace. However, you're leaving 
uh, oils or whatever is coming off your part that you blasted, you're leaving that on there. And that's mostly just because the water is dirty. So with all the media settled below this point, we could plumb this to a drain and that's going to be pretty clean. There might be a little bit of sediment in there, but likely not. It'll just drain the water off. So by leaving this closed and the media settled and opening this valve, you can change the water out. So you drain everything, you'd lift up your perforated work table, make sure that all the water is drained, simply come back and close this and fill up with water and you're all set to go with clean water. Okay, now that we've drained the hopper out, we're gonna come and do a last rinse to see what we've missed in the upper part of the machine. And these little areas up around here and the nooks and crannies are usually what you wanna rinse a little bit more. And now you go down into the hopper. We've drained the hopper, but there's going to be a little bit of media sitting in the corners of the hopper. And to do a good thorough job of changing media out, you want to make sure you get all of that out of there. So I'll first describe what the closed loop system uh, does overall. It allows you to rinse your parts right in the cabinet. So the great benefit of that is you don't need a continuous drain. You don't need a continuous water source. And if you're blasting parts that have debris on them or grease, uh, you're going to be able to filter that out continuously. So the way that it works is anytime you're adding water inside the cabinet, and that would be by the rinse nozzle or by the rinse on the window, that's going to be elevating that water level. So what's going to happen is that's going to elevate above this coupling, but this pinch valve is closed. So inside the hopper, you have agitation going on and your media is in full suspension. When you stop blasting, there's a time cycle, and that's adjustable in the control panel, and that's covered very well in the manual. You want to make an adjustment on that if you have fine media or coarse media. Uh, you just need to make a slight adjustment on that. So after that, after you're off the foot pedal for that time period, this pinch valve is going to open up. That elevated water level, which will be grease and oil and paint chips or whatever will float, will be up at the top and now your media has settled all below so it's not gonna drain out. So when that pinch valve opens up, it's gonna drain that water across this filter paper. It's gonna filter out the debris, and if a little bit of media has broken down and passed, that's also gonna be caught here. This paper is advanceable, and as you move it up this uh, incline and keep flopping it over on itself, that's gonna dry out for real easy disposal. So what happens after the water gets filtered through the paper, there's compartments, it's a settling tank that has baffles inside of it. So that water is slowly making its way back to the other side and the media or anything that possibly got by the filter paper, that's settling out. So on the other side, there is a, a hose and it comes back through this filter and back to a pump. So you have a secondary closed loop system, your slurry system inside, which, which I showed you the pump earlier, that's its own closed loop system. But this system is also closed loop. Comes back here and that pump pumps up to pressure and is waiting on demand for the rinse nozzle or for the window wash. So it's a continuous cycle. As you can see, there's just a vent stack on the top of the Vixen machine. Unlike a dry machine where you need to draw a negative pressure and you have that airborne dust all the time, one of the beauties of a wet machine is that you suppress all that dust. So the reason for the stack is that, so you can't rinse directly up there or if you blast it directly up there. So what's happening is it's just enough length that there isn't vapor coming out of there or media. The stack acts as a coalescing filter. The, the uh, water particles with the media just simply touch the side of that and they can't go up high enough and they just drip back out. You maybe noticed on the options for Vixens is the vapor extractor. So in some situations where you would never get a permit to go out of the building, but yet you would not be able to have an open stack like this, you use a vapor extractor. So there is several levels of that. You can have it open stacked, but have a media in there and that just further adds to coalescing. Nothing can get through that media without dripping out. Or if you absolutely have to draw a negative pressure, 
you can have the fan system. So it'll do uh, everything that I mentioned, except it's gonna actually draw a negative pressure here. And a lot of times that would be fed into a central system so that you are sure that you're never gonna have airborne anything in the, in the shop.